Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Mr. Douglas here. I uh, just wanted to quickly go over what we talked about in forensics. Um, we've been making these videos uh, now uh, at the end of each day just to kind of recap everything we've done. So feel free to go back and rewatch these and you can learn a little bit more about what we talked about in class. So remember today in class, we were talking about the difference between different types of evidence. So we focused on class versus individual evidence. And we focused on this idea of class evidence being evidence that belongs to a group, not just a single source. So this is like really broad pieces of evidence. Uh, we talked about things like hair, um, because different hair can come from different people, right? Different people have brown hair fibers. Um, it's not very specific to one person. Uh, things like soil. If I go outside and I come inside with a bag of dirt and I drop it on the table, unless you do some really heavy detailed work, soil can come from multiple places because there's multiple types of soil. If you're looking for people who have my shirt, um, sorry about that. I just got interrupted. But I had a quick phone call here in the classroom. So what I was saying was if someone ha has a shirt, a Nike shirt or something like that, it's not very descriptive. It belongs to a bigger group. Uh, blood type, again, is another type of example of that. A lot of people have a positive blood type. And if we talk about product brands, make models like cars, Toyota cars, Honda cars, um, years 1992, 2022, which is in the future, um, a lot of these different things, um, they belong to a much larger group. So remember, I gave you that example of thinking of fishing. If you're fishing and you cast out a really big net, you're going to bring in a lot of fish at one time. When we talk about class evidence, class evidence is going to cover many individuals under one particular example. Okay. So is it bad evidence? Nope. It's good evidence. It just is not very specific to a single source. So we need a lot of it to be able to um, use it as l basically saying one person is responsible for a crime. Then we talked about individual evidence, and this is evidence that belongs to a single source. This is evidence that belongs to a single source, and it can eliminate others. So things like DNA fingerprints, right? We talked a lot about that in class today. That's unique to you, unless you have a twin. Remember I told you, if you have a twin, if you commit the crime, blame it on the twin. Fingerprints. Um, your fingerprints are unique to you. So if your fingerprints are found at the scene of a crime, that really does connect you directly back to that location. Um, and also we talked about how your toes have a print as well. So if you're barefoot, that can get you as well. And then we talked a little bit about wear patterns. So striations, striations are scratch marks. And we talked about how if a bullet is released out of a gun or any kind of ballistic, as the bullet is released out of the barrel of the gun, so imagine my fingers are like the barrel of the gun, as the bullet comes through, the bullet gets scratched. And Every bullet, every bullet gets specific scratch marks that are only found in that particular firearm. So we can always identify where they came from. Uh, then we talked a little bit about other kinds of tools that could also be doing that because they have imperfections on them and just different things, and they can connect everything back to that particular tool. And then we talked about things fitting together, like a note ripped from a notepad. Um, it leaves a matching torn edge. Okay, so that's really the some really good examples of individual evidence. And then here we just talked a little bit about just kind of compare contrast chart here of different things. And this you can review on your own. Okay, so we did this today and then we focused in on uh, doing a, uh, a kind of a game where we did, um, let's see here, see if I can pull this up for you all. So remember we did this in class. If you weren't in class today, you can do this on your own. You can go through these slides and I presented you with evidence and you have to tell me whether or not it's class or individual evidence. But the trick is you only focus on what it says on the slide. Don't add your own detail. So don't worry about fingerprints or DNA unless the question actually asks for it. So this was the first one. Um, it showed a location of a crime scene and the description says it's a shoe that was spilled in paint. And the evidence we had at the suspect's home showed that the shoe print matched up with the paint impression. So that was individual. And you would type that in for each of those. We did that in class and we turned it in towards the end of class. So that's a wrap up of what we did today. Today was September 9th, 2021. Next time I see you will be on Monday the 13th. I'll see you then. Enjoy your weekend. Later, y'all. Be good.